Why do the tour players feel like they hit draws in there with pitches to give them greater ball control and don't hit fade? What we'll do is take a look at what the benefits are for hitting that draw in this video and how you can utilize this to give you more access to pins and give you better distance control. Now, I've recently spent some time with Soren Kjeltsen and Peter Hansen. These obviously have been two European Tour winners, and these guys get the feeling of it in little draws with their wedges, particularly sort of 70 yards down to sort of 30, as opposed to hitting a fade. Now, what I see is when you're hitting a fade, what you'll get is, as you're coming down, the club is going to slide more under the ball. So what will happen is the loft starts to tilt back. When the loft is tilting back here too much, the ball starts to run up the grooves. So your consistent contact's quite difficult. And what happens is you can sometimes get those ones that come out a bit soft and floaty, as opposed to hitting that one that's driving in with lots of spin. When you're getting it tilting back like this as well, you get slightly different ground interaction. But the big bit is, it's the balls end up floating. When you get anything like a bit of wind on that, it's totally eating your golf ball up. When I'm talking to Soren in particular about this, he really tries to get a feeling of hitting that draw, yet he hits a fade with everything else. Whereas when you saw those um, pictures, they had a very slight little bit of right to left. I mean, like two yards maximum, but it was getting that visualization of it. So what he was doing is, in order to hit that sort of low, sort of drivey, drawy pitch shot that's got all of the loaded spin, taking it back, feeling this right hand more on top here. So the club face just feels a little bit more closed. And on the way through, maintaining that angle. Now it feels like the toe of the club's a bit more on top of the ball, and you're then coming through, and that angle will be held here, okay? Now if I bring that back that to your eye, sometimes it looks like it's a bit closed, but actually an impact right there, it's dead square. What I see players doing is, when they've tried to work the club under on a pitch shot too much, and they get here, okay, so they've got this left wrist a bit more cupped and they've got this loft a bit more open, what they've actually got is if you return where that might have been an impact, it can be left. So what they're having to do then is shift the path even further left to play with this. So that's when you get those real floaty ones because obviously the loft's really changing. If you've got something where you set a loft or set an angle going back and then you rotate, you're going to deliver the club the same every time. Because you've got the club in a position, all you've got to do is rely on your body speed and making sure that those angles are retained and you can hit these little low shots in. Let's try a couple here, just have a little go at it. So you've kind of got sort of a 50 yard shot right here and this is with a 60 degree, okay? And hitting this little 60 degree into here, getting that feeling of holding those angles is going to be key. So you're going to just get that weight preset a little bit over that front side and get the feeling of holding those angles, staying over it, and in that sort of that low, little nipped shot, it's going to land sort of front edge and hopefully sort of pop it towards the flag. So that's got that little bit of low flight. It's just gone a little bit further than I wanted to land it, but it gripped like mad. It went in real low. It felt like it had that little draw shape to it. Genuinely, it moved like less than a yard but it had that sort of turn down look to it, but it was really good strike and it had loads of spin and the flight was really consistent. The analogy I often give is, if you've thrown a dart at a dartboard ever in your life, you're never gonna throw it up at the ceiling to try and land it in the board. You're kind of throwing it in at an angle here, okay? That's fairly direct, okay? So it's precision that you're looking for and throwing it on that flatter angle, it'll come in at the same angle every single time rather than trying and throwing it up and over. So let's just give that one more go, okay? Just to see if we can sort of get that club ball to come in at a nice consistent angle. So one more time will be just getting a feeling of holding that angle and rotating. Play the shot now. So I'm going to hit this, like I say, this that's like lowest sort of 50 yard. It's going to pop up on the green and just run out. So get that angle set and then just make that movement coming through. So that's going exactly the same flight. Probably landed two, three yards short of the other one and just gripped up pretty quickly, so about eight feet. So this nice little shot that we're wanting to play and feels really consistent. Dead easy to play it because all I've got to do is turn back and turn through. Presetting that angle going back, which is dead easy because the weight's on the front foot, and then just hold it. And you're holding it and the club's always coming through and he's always interacting with the ball on the same angle. 
when those wrists start to change and you start to hit those cut ones, you get that floaty flight and all of a sudden you get the elements coming into play as well as the lack of contact on the ball and it's really, really inconsistent with the way that ball is climbing the grooves. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, please comment below. Is there something like this video you'd like to get a bit more information on? Is there something out there that you think, why do the tour players play these particular shots? What's the insight that you could maybe get out of it? Maybe I can give you a bit of help on that. Comment below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Thanks for watching and talk with you again very soon.